My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, we upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. This morning, we are grateful to the Lord for His grace and His great presence among us. I always think about the privilege that we have to be in the presence of the King. Malachi 1.14, the Lord said that, For I am a great king, and I will be feared among the nations. God is a mighty king. And so when we have the privilege to be before him, we must celebrate it. Hallelujah. So we are grateful to God that he has given us the opportunity to be before him. And we also want to thank again our chairman and our fathers. And today we are very, very blessed to have our dear fathers. Prophet, thank you very much. Uh, for coming and our dear Apostle S.Y. and all our fathers uh, in our midst. I want to share with you on the topic possessing the nations, taking our place in what God is doing in our generation. So if you are writing possessing the nations, you bring a colon and taking our place in what God is doing in our generation. Possessing the nations, taking our place in what God is doing in our generation. And I'll be reading, I'll be engaging you on two or three main scriptures. I'll be doing First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 17 to 20. And I'll also be engaging you on the book of Revelations, Revelation 21, verse 22 to 24, and then verse 26 as well. Revelation chapter 21, verse 22 to 24. And I'll read verse 26. And the first one I mentioned is the book of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 17. Let's begin as I begin with the NIV. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 17 to 20. But brothers and sisters, when we were orphaned by being separated from you for a short time, in person, not in thought, out of our intense longing, we made every effort to see you. For we wanted to come to you. Suddenly, I, Paul, I did again and again, but Satan blocked our way. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown on which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes? Is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and our joy. I read 19 and 20 again. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord? Our Lord Jesus, when he comes, is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and our hope. I love the way Apostle puts the question in verse 19. He puts a question, so rhetorical in nature, and it comes to the, I mean, to, to the next verse, verse 20. And he answers it himself with certainty. He said, truly, you are our glory and our crown. And let's go to the book of Revelations. Revelation chapter 21, verse 22 to 24. And then I will jump and read verse 26. Verse 26. I did not see a temple in the city. Because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are his temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives a light. And the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light. And the kings of the earth will bring their, their splendor into the city. Verse 26. The glory and the honor of the nations will be brought into it. The glory and the splendor of the nations will be brought into it. In the book of Revelation, chapter 21, 
Apostle John is writing about the end of all things, I mean, the, the, the end of all things and the beginning of the new beginning. The beginning of the new. When you read the book of Revelation, it's about the end of all things. The picture is clearly painted that the world has an end and that at the end of the day, sin will be dealt with and there will be a new beginning, a new order that starts. And so, as this is the last but one chapter in the book, a new chapter is open. God doesn't just close the old, he begins the new. And in this chapter 21 I read, the chapter even begins, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and, the, and there was no longer the sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne, from the throne, saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among people, or among men, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And then verse 4, which is the last I'll read. And he, I'm talking about he, he will wipe every tear from their eye. And there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Praise the Lord. And the new has come. And so Revelation 21 is now unfolding the new that begins after the old has been folded away. This new that is talking about looks to be God's original intent. It looks to be that that's how God actually wanted things to be. That heaven and earth will be a continuum. It, there wouldn't be a separation. Sin will not bring these two worlds apart. But rather it will be a continuum where God and man live together. In fact, the story unfolds with that continuum, that beauty, that perfection. As a verse like Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. It says, and now, when the man heard the sound of God's walk in the garden, God was walking and it was making chichire, chichire, chichire. And who's coming? It's God. Coming to visit man. This was the daily life. In the evening, the dusk. God would visit man. And so it looks to me that sin came into the world and break, I mean, and broke this fellowship. And it looks like when the old has been done away with and sin has been folded, this new is going to be unfolded. And that is where I begin this message that the Lord has given me uh, from. In this new I'm talking about, the Bible said there's no death. There is no mourning, no tears, no pain. Think about it. Now, he talks about this new, it's not just a new arrangement. But he says that immediately the Holy Ghost took him to a mountain. The Holy Ghost said that, watch what I'm telling you that is real. And the prophet, I mean apostle, prophet, he said, I saw that the heavens were open and the city was coming from heaven down to be established on earth when i saw eventually it landed and the city is called the new jerusalem he said that in that city i mean everything is orderly everything is god everything is good but two or three things he said about the city that caught my attention number one there is no temple in the city everywhere is a temple and he said the reason why there is no temple is that God himself and the lamp is the temple of the city. You don't gather in a place to worship God. I mean, God is everywhere. The life we live is worship and is God. That is that. And he also says that there is no sun or moon in this city because the glory of God is the light of the city. And the lamp of God, the Lord Jesus, is the lamp that is in the city. What a city. But if you have time to read from verse 10 
all the way to verse 27. He's going to describe the city. He's going to tell you that the street in the city is of gold. And on and on, it brings us, I mean, a lot of detailed description about the city. But as he goes on to let us know about the city, verse 22 to 24 and 26 that I read, some few things that I want you to know if you are writing, this is where I may want you to write. Number one, the new Jerusalem is a glorious place. It's a glorious place. And as I said, the line that is in the place is the glory of God himself. It's a glorious place. The second one, number two, is that nations have a place in this new Jerusalem that I'm talking about. If you are doing the projection and you can project the text, the Revelation chapter 21, verse 24, to, uh, I mean, Revelation 21, 22 to 24, and 26 alone. If you can keep it on the screen, I will appreciate it. But what the Bible said is that, is that the nations, yeah, I want you to give attention to this. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the lamp are his temple. Let's go to the next verse, please. Humbly. The city, all right, uh, go to the next verse again, verse 24. Go to verse 24 for me. Verse 24 says that the nations will walk by its light. I've already explained that the light in this city is the glory of God. The beauty of God, the radiance that is emanating from God and getting everywhere. Far more than the sun shining in its all, I mean, all its glory. And, and, and that is that. So the Bible says the nations will walk by the light that is in the city. And it says that, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor or their glory into the city. If you go to verse 26, quickly shoot it, and I'll move from there. 26, the glory and the honor of the nations will be brought into it. The glory and the honor of the nations will be brought into the city. Now, I said that the nations have a place. We have a prophetic place in the new Jerusalem. What does it mean? God's mind is that in this new Jerusalem, every nation on earth is represented. And so think about it. We are programmed into this new Jerusalem. We are programmed into this new future, into this new arrangement. We are going to enjoy the glory of God there. We walk in the light. We will enjoy the glory of God. We have a place. We have a place. But then something begins to suddenly surprise me. The nations do not only come to walk in the glory. They do not only come to enjoy. But the Bible says that they also contribute to the beauty of the city. The nations, the Bible said that the kings of the earth will bring their splendor, they will bring their glory into the nation. And the glory and the honor of nations will be in the city also. And so I'm talking to you about, uh, I mean, a dual kind of arrangement. Other nations must be there to enjoy the beauty and the glory of God. The city also needs the nations. And God has given us a place that will bring our glory and our honor as nations into this beautiful city. What a God! You read the Bible and God is constantly working with men. He could have done it all alone, but he still chooses to work with men. Sometimes you see that we are not sleeping in. Men are disappointing God. And, and I mean, when we're doing this Christmas convention, I was preaching somewhere. The Spirit of God was just, the theme for the convention was, and his name shall be called Jesus. And what the Lord was laying on my heart was that the angel said, the reason why you will be called Jesus is that he will be the savior of his people. The Holy Ghost said, go and check his people first. So I began checking from Jesus' people. I know that his people are the Jews. But that day the Holy Ghost said, check his family, his family line. And Matthew chapter 1 begins with the family line of Jesus. Matthew and then Isaac and Jacob and all the way Perez, all the way Rahab 
uh, all of them, Moab, David, all the way to Jesus. Then I said, so he'll be the savior of his people. What does it mean? He said, that check the people in the family. Abraham the first mentioned, you will see that he was a mighty God, a mighty man of God, but he had these mistakes. You remember Abraham and Hagar's story? Come to Isaac. You remember James preached and said that Isaac wanted to be uh, facilitated, to be bribed so that he would bless. Come to Jacob. He took his brother's seniority and birthright in a way that I think was not with the approval of God. Think about it. After that, Judah, he went to sleep with his own son's, I mean, wife, who dressed as a prostitute. He lost his leadership staff because of that. Go to the next person. Go to the next person. Go to the next person. And come to Rahab, the prostitute that was in Jericho. Talk about it. I mean, all the way you see that sin is still aligned, I mean, around. And I look at it and I say, God, even the best of his men, they still have their own problems and challenges. Yet God will be patient. He has a place for us. I want you to know that, no, I mean, none of us can go so wide where the love of God cannot reach you and bring you back. Nobody can sink so deep that the love of God cannot get there. David said, I cross over to the, to the other side of the sea and there your hand is with me. I pray that you will not be lost. Hallelujah. God. But if you are to move forward, I brought you to where this arrangement where we enjoy, yet we have a place and God wants the nation to bring their glory. I want you to give attention to what he said that the kings of the earth will bring their glory into the nations and the nations themselves by their honor and glory they will contribute to this new Jerusalem that I'm talking about that I'm talking about as I move on many theologians have said many things about these nations I'm talking about some said oh they are not real nations like America, like Ghana, Peru. No. They are rather in the millennial rule. When Jesus has come and is ruling with us, and we are going to be made kings and all that, and we are going to have territories that we are going to rule. And so when we get there, maybe there will be nations and we would have ruled them. And so when we are coming into the kingdom, when we are in the new Jerusalem, it is according to where we have territories and rules. That will be bringing our glory. That is fine. But I think what is of interest in the point I'm raising is that whether it is nations as we understand them now or territories that we will rule over, it is the representation from the earth. Locations in the earth with their distinctiveness that have a place in the kingdom. It is the earth having relevance, having a place. In the new arrangement of God after all what the author is trying to teach here is that behold there is a new order and God is coming down to live among men and the heavenly is coming with the earthly so that the celestial and the what we call it the terrestra will be together it's like Isaiah said he said I see that a virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and his name shall be called e ma -Nuel, God inside of man. The prophet said, I see some years coming. Listen, I will see that God is living inside of human beings. This is the mind of God. That he will so much fail us. When we get up in the morning, it will be him and us. As we go to the lectures, it will be him and us. We will make room for him. Oh, hallelujah. And we will have him and he will have us. This is the place. This is the place. And so, back to what I'm trying to say. Nations have some glory. And that glory is important to the arrangement of God. Remember, I'm talking about possessing the nations. Taking your place in what God is doing in our generation. The glory of nations is seen anytime there's a program and nations have got it. Sometimes it's in the World Cup. 
sometimes it's in some sport events sometimes at the un sometimes in global church gatherings i've gone for a church uh, conference where nations brought their flags and then we all were dancing and you see the beauty whenever nations come together there's some joy there's some glory that is seen they come with their splendor and before you realize it brings some atmosphere of joy and it keeps rising that splendor and honor that that joy we see is nothing as compared to the glory that our our collective glories will bring in the kingdom of god in the kingdom of god it's only an example it's only an example verse 26 and the nations will bring their honor and their glory into the nations at this point you should you should get me that god then is interested in the nations if god has a future plan about the nation that god is interested in the nations but you know what i suddenly come to be an interesting twist i call it opposing interest in the nations and the next text that i'm going to let us read and i will encourage you you can read more about this in revelation chapter 17 and revelation chapter 18 but for now let's go to the book of revelation chapter 17 verse 1 to 7 then i'll do only some small part of chapter 18 maybe i'll do 18 1 to 3 but for now you just go to revelations chapter 17 verse 1 to verse 7 again let me read from the niv and one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me come i will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sit by the many sorry who sit by many waters with the kings of the earth she committed adultery and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adultery then the angel carried me away in the spirit the angel carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness there i saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven hairs and ten horns the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold precious stones and pearls she held a golden cup in her hand filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries and the name written on her forehead was babylon the great the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth i saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of god's holy people the blood of those who bore testimony to jesus and when i saw her i was greatly astonished i was surprised then the angel said to me why are you astonished i will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that she rise which are the seven hairs and the seven horns let's jump to verse 15 and 18 of this same chapter quickly look at what verse 15 says then the angel said to me the waters you saw where the the prostitute sits in other words the other version says that the waters that you saw that the prostitute sat on those waters are peoples multitudes nations and languages come to verse 18 the woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth and so suddenly the writer of revelations introduced this figure with a very strong interest in the nations also and this interest is again the interest of our god and she she sits on the nations and wants to control the nation not only that she is also interested in the kings of the nations but let's go to chapter 18 as i said we'll read just three or four verses in chapter 18 18 verse 1 to 4 after this i saw another angel coming down from heaven he had great authority and the earth was brightened by his splendor when he appeared in the skies with a mighty voice he shouted falling fallen is babylon the great she has become a dwelling for demons 
and a hand for every impure spirit, a hand for every unclean bed, a hand for every unclean and detestable animal. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of fair adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchant, the business people of the world, grew rich from her excessive riches. What am I trying to say? Babylon is one of the weaponic names of the devil in the Bible. It's a figurative name. It, it, it is an assemblage of many things. It is not only about a person. It connotes ideas. It connotes plans. It connotes strategies. It connotes times and seasons and periods. The devil has plans. He has people. He has agendas, strategies, and approaches, and schemes, and the plans, and the time to execute them. But we never have to allow ourselves to be confused by the devil. That's what the Bible said. Because you can always summarize everything and say it's the same old devil. So, this person is introduced to us. The Bible said her name is Babylon the Great. When you read about her, some very, very simple things I want you to notice about her. Is that the Bible introduced her as a woman, like a female. The Bible said that she is the mother of all prostitutes. Bible said that she carries abominations of the earth with her. Then the Bible also says that the same person who is a female, uh, I mean a feminine figure, is also a city. It's called a city also. She, she, she is used for her, but you also meet her as a city. Then at the same time, she's also somebody with authority. And so that's why I said that it's an assembly of many things all together. It's about what is trying to push. This figure I'm talking about is presented as being extremely rich. And she is into a lot of business transactions with the nations of the world. Many, many of the world's rich people she deals with. And the Bible said that indeed she has made many people rich. That is why Christians will have to be very careful about using how much money you have to, to demonstrate how much of God you have or how much God has blessed you. And if you're a young person listening to me, it takes more than riches for, for you to be, I mean, for, for you, it must take more than that for you to be convinced that this is of God. It must take more than prophecy. It must take more than influence. You don't just follow anybody because they are on the, on the stage and they can wake their, their waist like that and, and one million people are already following. And you don't excuse anybody. You have made them run out to what thing. The Bible said that a good fruit, a good tree cannot produce bad fruit. Neither can a bad tree produce good fruit. The Bible said that salty water cannot come from what? A spring. That is not salty. And in, in, in the other way, it cannot cross. You know, you meet many young people. They know that some people are leading immoral lives. And all the things they are doing, the Bible does not condone. Yet they still manage and stay and follow them. That is that. I want you to make, I mean, I want to make it very plain that this woman has everything that a young person of today would want. There is money, there's influence, they're dealing with the kings of the world, the most important people, and all that. Yet, gradually... We are noticing her to be somebody interested in the nations against the interests of God. Against the interests of God. If time allowed, you will see more about this uh, being that I talk about or this figure I talk about. The last I want you to remember about the things I read about her in the Bible is that she is the home of demons. She's not only fabulously rich and dealing with the top people. She is the home. Demons are, she is full of demons. And because of that, the Bible talks about 
becoming a home for all the bad things, all the bad days, all the bad days, all the bad days, all the bad. She carries demonic power. Let me put it together. So it looks like the mathematics and engineering and all this is that this is a figure that the devil puts forward. That has money with which he can move the world and get people to follow. It is so wise to deal with people of influence, the kings of the world. And then it's using adultery, fornication, prostitution, and all that you can talk about. She's using that tool also. She can give you fame and, and, and all the things the Bible is talk, talking about. And then she is in an adulterous relationship with the, the rulers of the world, the kings of the world, the people who should go to heaven and show their glory there. This woman is in a sexual affair with them. And when you follow, it's like she's doing all this for all these leaders so that she will get access over the nations and sit on them like we read that she was sitting on the waters which are multitudes, nations, peoples, and languages. It comes all the way down. If you put the equal to sign, she is interested in the nations. She wants to get the nations by them, I mean by herself, in the interest of the devil. I think that by now you are making the links in your mind. My question that I have for you, I don't intend to answer it. Would the church be able to stand against Satan's attack with riches, sexual immorality, with power, with fame? With which the devil in this strategy of Babylon the Great would want to dissuade people to proceed. I mean, to dissuade people so that she will proceed to take over the nations. The church is you. And so, you, if the devil came, I mean, if Babylon the Great, this woman, she came with all the things that she can offer, will she succeed in taking you? So that beyond you, she can take the nations. I want you to know that when the Church of Pentecost talks about nations, don't take it too far. I'm a nation. The Bible said that God formed a nation out of one man, Abraham. So by nations, I mean people. In you are many nations. Because of our time, the contention of interest. The contention of interest. First John chapter 2, verse 15 and 17 say that, Hey, do not love the world and do not love anything that is in the world. Don't love the world. Are you listening to the word of God, please? Don't love the world or anything that is in the world. Then he goes on to list what is in the world. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. These are the biggest summaries of what is in the world. I want to also go in that Brazilian hair so that when they see, they will know that, yeah. Oh, so, so you, all you want is so that we know, yeah. Oh, we know the year already. Don't, don't go and wear it. You, you, you don't have to prove anything to anybody. Listen, the Bible said they measuring themselves and comparing themselves by themselves are not wise. In the world, you are born alone. You have some classmates, but in many cases, you never meet them again. You will die alone. Go to eternal destinations alone. And you are rewarded alone. So who are you trying to please? <laughs> Book of James said that, Don't you know that friendliness with the world is enmity with God? By the world, I mean the systems, the influence, the fashions. I mean the way, the song, and all the things, the manners of the world. They are presented as attractions for young people. And I believe that by now you are together with me in where we are traveling to. In a time like this, where the world has become very worldly. And as I said, the world, I don't use it for the earth. I'm not talking about God's creation and the people he has made and the plants and the, I'm not talking about the cosmos. I'm talking about the systems of leadership, of influence, the way of life, lifestyles, choices that are sold to us on the TV, 
that is dictating how we should live our lives and the philosophies that underpin them. Any kind of thing you want to do in education, even the way people teach, it is some philosophy. There are some, there's a philosophy called existentialism. It says that what is really important is you and that you will live and it will be well with you. Near Kenya and forget about it. There's nothing like a law. What is a law? The law is me. There's nothing like the truth. I'm the truth. There's nothing like reality. You understand? I am the reality. It's all about me. Go to hell. This is called existentialism. It's behind some of the things you say, but you don't know. Philosophy that push the world. Philosophy that push the world. My point, if you are carrying it home, is that in a time like this, when the devil is pushing, pushing, and pushing, and people have become so worldly, and Christians are following. And yesterday we saw it. I love the, the, I mean, the opening piece. You saw the news media and all the news items. Christians are down. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And he's saying that, ah, why is it that the reportage on Christianity in our time is it, so negative compared to the reportage in those days? We must change our reportage. And Jesus told us, Young Kasafi, that we are holding the cutlass and killing ourselves on social media. We are this, we are members of the church of Ben. Come and see how we are killing ourselves. So, the point is that in this time where the devil is pushing and pushing and pushing, an example I'm raising, even among us as believers, look at how the world is pushing. How much more in the world? I want you to know and I want to sound a bell that in such a time when the, the, the war and the press have become so hard, God has not deserted his interest of wanting nations in his kingdom. God still has an agenda and is pushing it hard. Blessed are you if you respond to what God is doing and you separate yourself to your God and say that oh God I'm on your side oh God I'm on your side oh God I take my place in my generation and all that you are doing do you know how it begins Jesus said it yesterday wherever you go let them know that you are on God's side let them know that oh another national service guy has come here he belongs to Jesus and from this time we'll be preaching let's go back to the old days I mean, should I even call them the old days? In my own time, we are doing it. And I know many of you are doing it. I want to push you more. That in the class, before the others come, we are doing devotion in the, with the whole class, praying and we'll preach. Whether you like it or not, we are there already. We came first, we started singing. Let's come to the days of John Brockerson. Who is there? Oh, it's Brother John. He had been praying for about two hours and he followed it up with John Brockerson. This is called serving the interests of God in your generation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because of our time, I want to leave many of them and come to a point I want to really live with you. And so I'm going to request for a file to be played. And when it has been played, I'll just sum it up and then bring this session to an end. If you can play the fire. If you can check the sound for us. As they are working on it, as they are working, I wanted that song to just make a point. I wanted that song, they are working on the, they are working on the, 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 the sound. But I wanted it just to make a point. Listen, the scripture I read, the first one, Apostle Paul is saying that, Hey, this PCC building, the cost, the sponsoring that they have given us to come for the conference, the fathers we have, the mothers we have, and even this microphone, 
What we really are seeking is that one day we will present you in heaven among the people and the nations. Hallelujah. He was telling the church in the Salaika, you are my joy that day. You are even the crown I wear. That day when the nations, you are part. That is why when for a short time I couldn't even come to you, I, I just could not bear it. I just could not bear it. you so you can get this song and listen to all the words but the point is that he said father to child your father your spirit to my spirit and with your bread of life the bible this is how i come alive and this is how i take my world do you know how the world is taken every morning before god oh god i come david said oh god every day you hear my voice some five verse three every day every day every day when you live the life that way you see that the levels are changing something in you begins to be able to take the world take your room take your friends take your family and you are taking over you are making impact I this song is only to teach you how but listen the text the last one I read apostle in the text the key text he's saying that to make sure that you Thessalonians you are among the nations that will be in the kingdom in the new Jerusalem I will do it I'll do it that's why I cannot wait that's why I'm doing my all that's why I want to come and for you do you know what it means you have to look at somebody called Aki Palolo in your school you look at their face and say I just cannot imagine how this drunkard his face will be among the nations in heaven I will send him there by all means him preach on him over the tunnel you will do everything and add him to the nations in heaven that is your crown may the lord make our crown shine oh hallelujah may you rise up may you make an impact on your world may you add to the nations in the kingdom may your reward be great may the lord bless you all put your hands together for jesus Church, we are going to pray. You see, the great Babylon is taking over the world. But the Lord is also counting on you. The reason why the other day Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hate will never prevail against it was because that he was going to raise another generation who will carry the fire of God wherever they go. And this generation, the gate of hate and the great Babylon cannot overcome them. This very morning we are going to pray and we are going to invoke the powers of the 
triune God. Wherever we go, our world needs us. And so I like this song so much. My world needs me. Because I am here, change must come. Because you are on the campus there, change must come. Because you are there to transformation. Life must be given to Christ. Shall we lift up our voices and cry to our Father?
we need a certain kind oh. of oil and grace to be able to confront these philosophical demons. We are praying that God prepares something us. is coming upon you. Jesus. Bring me to your brook eh, and feed me with your very self.
Consumacy. Still in the mood of prayer. Make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend and also make sure that you like the video so that youtube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message if you have any question please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you and also if you are watching this video and you don't know jesus christ ask the lord and personal savior i want you to make that decision just contact us in the description Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.